Hi, my name is Anne and I'm the founder of Edica Naturals. At Edica Naturals, we develop plant-based natural supplements as a simple and fast solution to help you feel like the optimal you. Our formulations use specific ingredients that synergistically work together to get you incredible results. The compounds are an intelligent formulation that work in conjunction to provide an entourage-like effect. What does that mean? It means that the combination produces greater benefits than the individual ingredients on their own. So what does that mean for your body? Well, the interactive effect layers the results to give greater benefits. Synergistic ingredients are combined to provide both a more immediate short-term fix in as little as seven days and a sustained long-term solution system that can help you every day. Our formulations are backed by scientific data and studies and are formulated by pharmacists and naturopaths, approved by Health Canada, which is a worldwide leader in natural product regulation, and they're FDA reviewed. I personally stand by all of the products as I am proudly the company guinea pig. And personally, my experiences is that my menopause symptoms are gone. My joint pain is gone. My sex drive is great with chi energy. My monkey brain is calm and focused and my immune system is awesome. I don't even suffer a sniffle. I pride myself that our products deliver excellent results with family, friends and customers sampling and having true benefits. I'm Anne, and these are simple solutions for the optimal you. Hi everyone, welcome. And that was a great video from Edica Naturals. Thank you, Anne, and to Edica Naturals for that. Um, so again, welcome everyone to the Psychedelics and Whole Health panel. Um, my name's Praveen Singh, as Tracy, Tracy mentioned, and I'm one of the AEs at Marigold PR. Um, we're so excited to have everyone here for day two of the WWC conference. It's been an amazing time so far with some amazing discussions and connecting with women who are truly inspiring and amazing. So we do thank you again for your time and for being here. Um, and um, so we're really excited also to have Ann Barnes here from Edica Naturals, as Tracy mentioned, Celine May Tabrizi and Shannon Lynn Smadella on the panel today to talk about psychedelics and whole health. So just to start, I thought it'd be great if we could just do um, an introduction and share a little bit about our backgrounds. And if Celine May, you wanted to um, start us off. Yeah, thanks so much, Parveen. And that was a really beautiful and inspirational video. And thank you so much. Great to see you, Shannon, uh, as always. Yeah, so my name is Salome Tabrizi. I'm, uh, I would say, uh, integration coach, mostly. I wear many hats right now in the psychedelic space, but uh, my main um, passion is being an integration coach and a plant medicine facilitator. Um, I currently run my clients through a three to six month program, being with them from the initial part of their journey uh, as they're opening up um, into the psychedelic space, whether they're more on like the newer side of things or they're actually facilitators and want to take themselves to the next level um, and opening up more of their gifts, um, especially in the intuitive and psychic senses, many of us are opening more and more to, to those realms. My other hat is uh, one of the co-founding members of the Canadian Psychedelic Association, which is a unifying organization for the voice of psychedelics in Canada. Um, we have several different uh, initiatives, including Decrim Nature Canada, um, as well as um, talks with Parliament currently actually happening this week. Um, we also have the MADE campaign, which is another policy arm of the CPA in, uh, in which we are supporting to bring more end of life access um, to plant medicines uh, for individuals, kind of um, celebrating and on the shoulders of their cell and what happened with, uh, with their section 56 exemptions uh, in this past year. Um, another arm of the CPA includes uh, informative webinars and a place of connection for the community um, to come and network and be together and really hear each other and dive deeper into their own work. And that's through the monthly town halls. So again, if you're interested and want to be part of the CPA and support these different initiatives in your communities, um, reach out to us at psychedelicassociation.net and um, become, a become a friend of the CPA. And there's also a portal for members to connect together and um, share resources. Thank you so much. Thank you, Selene. 
that was amazing. Um, and now if um, Shannon, you wanted to tell us a little bit about your background. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Parveen. And uh, it's nice to meet you, Anne, and uh, nice to see you, Salome, as well. Um, so in the psychedelic realm, I guess you can say, um, I'm the business advisor and spokesperson for World Psychedelics Day. And uh, World Psychedelics Day is uh, going to be June 20th, which we're very excited to um, talk about. It's part of the International Psychedelics Awareness Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization. Um, and we welcome collaborators, allies across all identities, spectrums, and uh, we're very excited to launch the inaugural uh, World Psychedelics Day, like I said, coming up on June 20th. And if you want more information on that, you can go to the website at worldpsychedelicsday.org. We have a lineup of over, I believe it's 36 speakers now that we'll be having on that day. And um, uh, it includes all all types of prominent speakers from the industry all over the world so uh, make sure and check it out um like Selma, i do wear a few different hats so um, aside from being um, on the business side in psychedelics i um, have been in the wellness industry for about 15 years now as a wellness coach and uh, and spiritual coach and in that um, i dabble in many different modalities um, including the yogic sciences um, with the Chopra Center, uh, which I'm trained by and yeah, and various other ones, which we'll probably come across today. So I just wanna say I'm super excited to be here. And if you want more information again on World Psychedelics Day, which we hope you can join, we'll be streaming these vid videos free to everyone on the day. It's worldpsychedelicsday.org. Thank you, Shannon, that's great. And um... Last but not least, Anne Barnes from Edica Naturals, please. Hi, thank you so much for having uh, me and Edica is really excited to be here um, and lovely to meet you lovely ladies. Um, it's great to meet women that are like-minded. So um, my background is sort of all over the place. So I'll just really briefly say it. Uh, I was uh, trained as a corporate lawyer, uh, got disgruntled with it, quit, started up a bunch of health food companies, including Chia and hemp seed, the hemp seed uh, spun off into a superfood company that then I got interested in hemp growing, dealt with the hemp growers, learned about cannabis, and then that became um, a passion for the cannabis. And we became the first licensed producer in Canada with a company called Peace Naturals that I ran and then ultimately sold. Um, at the same time, I was looking at plant-based everything because I love it. I live it. I've been a vegetarian since I was 17, so that's a long time ago. And um, yeah, I just am really passionate about it. So I started having all these problems like aging issues um, and I couldn't find any solutions. And I said, you know, F it, I'm going to go out and figure this out myself. And so that actually got me into the whole formulation side of it. And it was basically my menopause that jump started the whole Edica company. Um, and since then I've also gotten really involved in um, psychedelic world. I'm a director of Red Light Holland um, and also am super interested in the functional aspect of all mushroom based everything. So. Wow. Thank you, Anne. That's amazing. I'm actually, we'll definitely have to talk about the aging solutions a little bit later on. <laughs> um, just to start, I wanted to ask, um, just to start off our discussion today about what does whole health mean to you? And if um, Shannon, you could start with what does whole health mean to you? Sure, thank you so much, Parveen. Um, that's a very good question as well. And I guess we have to figure out first, what is health? <laughs> because there's many different definitions of that. You know, is health just focusing on the body aspect? Is it focusing on the mind aspect? Is it just those two, you know, which we've been focusing on for, um, or I guess in, you know, are the main two focuses, but there are, there are different aspects to our being even beyond that, that we need to consider, um, you know, such as the energetic aspect, which is extremely important. And then we have, you know, the soul consciousness aspect beyond that, you know, the, the source of our, our being, the Wi-Fi that's flowing through all of us, you know, that, that connects us all. So um, I think an important thing to remember in whole health is that there are many different aspects to it. Um, there is internal and then there is external. 
on one level. So, you know, we have our, our internal health, which we need to look at in terms of um, physiology, uh, mental aspects, energetic aspects. Um, and then we also have to look at the outer health as to how we're being in this world as well. So what is our connection to the earth? What is the connection to the rest of the beings on this planet? Um, you know, to, to look at it in a holistic aspect, I think is, is very important. And then on top of that, to remember what we're made of um, in regards to the different elements that we're, we're working with. You know, we have earth, air, water, fire, a cache. Um, and it's important to know that, uh, that we're made of earth <laughs> and to remember that and to remember our connection to the earth, um, to give reverence to that for our health, to give reverence to the water for our health. You know, we're, we're a large percentage of us, the main, the main element is water. Um, you know, to remember that we have this fire burning within us and then air, which is extremely important and has definitely been a theme um, this past year and a half, especially with what's happening with COVID. So, um, and then to remember, you know, there's, there's a cache as well. There's something that connects us all. There's that space. So looking, that seems like a lot to look after when, you know, when we're just normally focused on the body and the mind, but it's remembering that we're more than just that. And to know that there are things that we can do to bring wellness, uh, to work with trauma, to uh, release these things that we're holding on to in all of these layers of our life. Well, Hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> Was there anything that um, Anne or Salima you wanted to add to that about what whole health means to you? I just love that, Shannon. I think that that basically I had it in my head, mind, body, mind, body, soul. Um, I think of it as a car. That's the body. The engine is your mind and your soul is the gas that you put in it. And it really, that's your choice. Like what you put in it is what you get out of it. And to me, it's your sense of purpose, your connection, your ability to truly uh, ascend and, and connect. So I wholeheartedly agree with you, Shannon. Yeah, just echoing some of the things that the ladies have said. Um, I oftentimes, when working with clients, um, share Maslow's hierarchy of needs and, you know, the baseline being food, shelter, water, and the way that Shannon put it, you know, not just food, shelter, and water, but clean water, you know, filtered water, ionized water, um, going to the source of the water, if we have the chance to go and collect water from um, streams and uh, from uh, sources and so um, that you know foundation is key right now for us and then he goes up to safety but I think you know and then further up into kind of what Anne was saying in mission and then further up into um, finally in, at the top of the pyramid which is self-actualization but a connection to source but I think at this time because just because we have been um, disconnected in a lot of ways. Like I feel like right now we, we're living a pandemic of disconnection and a pandemic of pain. And so when we look at that, then the actually the bottom part of the um, pyramid for me has to be the connection to source, has to be connection to um, our consciousness and what is actually beyond this physical space. So once that is set, then it's like, okay, from that space of that you're actually not this body, let's come back to the body and, and speak about ways that the body is speaking to us. And so where are the pain points? If your body is in pain, it's speaking to you. And where can we kind of follow that thread into the emotions and then into the thoughts or into the thoughts and into the emotions. And so um, it's a beautiful container that we can work at like that, but I like switching it a little bit more and bringing self-actualization actually at the base of the pyramid. That's a great way to look at it, Lume. Thank you, everyone. So if we have, um, so if whole health is the mind, the body and the soul, how do psycho, what role do psychedelics play in whole health and mental health then, especially during um, this time with the pandemic and um, the awareness of mental health issues and the increase. Uh, did anyone wanna start for that? I'd love to just give yeah. a couple of thoughts. Um, I think that psychedelics has an unbelievable 
uh, benefit to humanity right now, especially given what we're living through. And I do agree with, um, you know, the idea that we're living a pandemic of trauma. And um, I think that, you know, the role that psychedelics has is that it, we know that it increases our, our consciousness. We know that it increases our brain capacity. We know that it, it, we know that it connects us on a higher level to nature. So I think that it is, I think that the psychedelic side of it is going to separate the health and wellness industry. And I've been in it for a while. We've always concentrated on mind and body, right? It's mind and body, mind and body, right? But the soul element has really been lost. And I think we're seeing that in the trauma that we're, we're, we're viewing on a global level. Um, and I think psychedelics can really bring us back to what's important and, and get us back to a connection with ourselves which allows us then to connect with everything else. But if we're not connected here, you can't see outside of your, your broken mirrors. So I think it's an imperative part of that process. Thank you, Ken. Oh, was there anything, uh, Shannon, did you wanna to add to that? Yeah, for sure. And I definitely will, you know, will echo what Anne said there as well. And um, I think that psychedelics are important in, um, and I'm sure you guys have heard this before, but it's, you know, it's giving us that peak over the wall. So growing up the way that we're conditioned, we we do think about the body, you know, as the main aspect of our being. And then, and then we're, you know, then we think about the intellect and the mind um, and beyond that um, we're not accustomed to mystical experiences or experiences beyond beyond the body and the intellect. So psychedelics gives us that peek over the wall so we can see that, hey, there's more to this existence than just this body, just this mind. And when we have that peak, you know, some some people go by the philosophy of, you know, you get the message and you hang up the phone and some people, you know, or on a trampoline jumping to get that peak <laughs> consistently, uh, whichever method, you know, people choose to do it's, it's, you know, definitely um, um, their choice for that. But with the peak, we can, we can see what's on the other side. We can know that there's more than just the body, just the mind. And then we, when we come back, you know, when we settle back down on that earth on our, you know, on our foundation, we can then do the work to build that ladder so that we can have that um, consistent view over the wall. So that it's a part of our everyday life. So that we don't have to have a trampoline, you know? Um, and there are many practices obviously that people can do, but that's the part of doing the work. Um, that's the part of uh, a large part of the integration, you know, and working with professionals uh, to do that. So they give us a peek is, is I guess the short version of what I'm, I'm saying here. Yeah, exactly. Those peak experiences, I feel, are so important. What a gift, you know, in our mm -hmm. lifetime to have access to those peak experiences uh, where meditators have been sitting, you know, and they do the fMRI uh, research and they show that meditators have to meditate for, especially like the Buddhist monks who are so dedicated and devoted, they have to sit for thousands of hours to sometimes reach these peak experiences of, of God's source essence and when we connect with that god source essence there is a bit of a relaxation that happens right like i think we have all experienced this in in psychedelic plant medicine ceremonies where i often sometimes say it's a forced meditation like we are dropped in the mind is oftentimes not there and everything that we need to see where if our mind is busy we don't even get a chance to drop into those moments, everything that we need to see as far as our traumas, our fears, our beliefs, our, um, our blocks, they come up to the surface within this meditative container. And so within this meditative container, we're also able to feel ourselves as relaxed, feel ourselves in surrender, feel ourselves in um, this state of equilibrium. And like Shannon said, people like, you know, we reach those states and then I oftentimes say we drop back to our baseline and dropping, like going to those peak states of expansion is also quite hard on the nervous system. You know, when I, when I started working with ayahuasca, um, 
eight or nine years ago, it was a sledgehammer. I was going into ceremony after ceremony just because that was my my path at that time. And I know my central nervous system got quite, um, I would say, electrocuted in lack of better words. And so coming back to that um, calmness in the nervous system has been the integration process. So I always tell people, you're going to go up to this level and then you got to have like steps so you don't fall back and hit your, hit your head and you just kind of slowly, slowly are able to come back. But those steps need to be first created before you even go into the psychedelic space, which um, is yoga, which is meditation, which is diet, which is the, you know, the uh, breath work. These things are not just, oh, maybe I should do it. It's completely essential right now if we're going to do this work. Thank you. That was great. Um, I love the, you know, touching on the mind, body and soul and how it's not, you know, looking past just mind and body, which is what I think a lot of people focus on. And uh, so you may just touched on um, the steps before you can even get into the psychedelics uh, journey. Um, that you take, you know, with the breathing and yoga. So just on the back of that, I wanted to ask what practices can people partake in to support this journey um, from a mental, um, from a, you know, a mental, physical and spiritual place that can be supported by plant medicine. Um, Salima, did you want to start? Sure, thank you. Um, yes, so somatics is really essential right now the somatic work field with you know whether it's bezel van der Kolk's work or um, again it's in the realm of even Dr. Gabor Mate's work in compassion inquiry what does it mean to be compassionate within our own body um, before we open up our heart because as one of the other panelists actually in the morning mentioned so beautifully opening up the heart and seeing what's actually inside it can be it, it can be very detrimental for people and it's not like okay let's you know let's just go in there because there is a numbing aspect that happens within our system that's actually supportive and we want to like i can give the example of your your leg going numb you know the pins and needles that you get it's quite painful and when you start to create movement. And so there has to be support in which way to move and which way to start to open up the blood flow because it can be jarring if you suddenly move your foot back. And so this, um, this piece around slowly opening up the, the entanglement of trauma with somatic therapies and going and seeing people, float therapy, um, starting with microdosing, um, again, uh, restorative yin practices for yoga, breathing, just sitting for 10 minutes every day, you know, these things and, and beyond, like I, I have a 45 minute practice right now that again, is essential. If I don't do that, I know that my day might not be as um, steady as I would like. And so um, really, mm, those are some of the practices and then the nutrition, and I can touch upon that later. Amazing. Thank you. Um, and? Did you have a... Yeah, I would. I would reflect the same things. I think. Um, Shannon, sorry. Right. Oh, sorry. Did you want Shannon or? Wasn't sure. Oh no 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 sorry. Okay sorry. Go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. It's hard on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So this is the same same things. I would say conscious conscious living is imperative, and that is you know literally saying to yourself, "Where's my silo? Is my silo is mind." body, spirit, what fits into each one of them? And how am I going to what am I going to do on a daily basis in those routines? I, I agree with you, they're absolutely imperative. If you don't have routines, you will fall off whatever wagon you think you're on. Um, and that's that that creates your personal responsibility to yourself, like a routine is your personal commitment to yourself, because you've made a commitment to an outcome that you want. So you really to me, it's reverse engineering everything like if you are dealing with your mind, your body, and your spirit, what are you going to do for your body? Okay, we need to exercise. We need to get you good food. We need to get supplements into you. If you are missing things, you need to understand how that machine works. Once you understand how that machine works, you don't want to put pollutants into it because you recognize the beauty of that machine, right? Likewise with your mind. Do you have toxic people around you? Like that toxicity, that's going to play, you know what I mean? Like you have to just start 
kind of thinking about those different buckets and then what you can do on a daily basis and start out small, like start out in small little new routines. Like you're not going to become a, a, a you know, a flexible yoga, yogi master overnight. Like, you know what I mean? Or some people might, might feel, you know, almost um, intimidated by that. So it's like starting out in small little areas, but knowing consciously which bucket you're kind of working on. And then you're giving, you're consciously giving back to yourself with that routine. Thank you, Ben. Thanks, Ben. Yep. And uh, I definitely love what, um, what both Salome and Anne said. And, and I just want to touch on this, um, I guess, from a yogic sciences perspective. Um, there are a few different ways I can answer this question. So I'm just um, discerning which way um, would be best to bring forward here. But roots is definitely important. And, you know, when we go from a uh, yogic sciences perspective, perspective, there's something called sadhana, which is our daily practice. And that's something that combined with psychedelic therapy um, can be extremely important in our evolution of consciousness. Um, or I guess, you know, another word you could use for it is enlightenment. Um, so when we're looking at this, uh, this progression, there are many things we can do, but a, th a big thing we forget is our energetic body. And, you know, when you look into the quantum physics realm of it, we're, we're made of energy. Um, all matter is made of, you know, we have electrons, protons, neutrons. We learned that in, I think in high school or in elementary school. And, and this, this energy uh, can be influenced for our well being. Uh, so when we, when we look at the different practices in yoga, we, we first of all start with our yamas and yamas, which is our ethical practices. So tune in to what are our ethical practices. And those are things that psychedelics can help us rewire. <laughs> um, and I think have helped a lot of us rewire, you know, how are we looking at our relation to this planet and this earth and the people around us and then we go into the the hatha yoga which is the physical aspect of it um, how are we making sure that our physiology um, and energy is in in line uh, when we move on from that we go into uh, the pranayama which is the breath and working with the energy in the body um, and then you know we go on to the other states uh, beyond that which is prachahara withdrawal from the senses dhyana dharana and samadhi but um, those, those higher states are those states that we can get in with altered states of consciousness and psychedelics give us that taste. So they, there are different practices that can integrate with psychedelics to help us further our, our I guess, evolution of consciousness or bring us closer to that enlightenment. Um, so the biggest one I would have to say is, uh, is just having a practice and having a routine, like I mentioned, and then working with the energy body, knowing that everything around us influences us, the people you hang around with, the music you listen to, the media that you take in, um, so many different things, uh, the food that you eat, which Salome uh, mentioned as well, nutrition, um, everything we put into us becomes us. So what you know, are, are you being conscious of what we're putting into our body? Um, she also mentioned water, you know, drinking clean water, giving reverence to what keeps us alive, to the water, to the earth, I think are all important things. So focusing on those elemental aspects as well. So I could talk forever about this, but I'm just going to, I'm going to end it there. <laughs> Thank you so much, um, Anne, Sally, May, and uh, Shannon. That was amazing. Um, so based on everything you've said, we've touched a lot on practices that are actually very trendy at the moment. So, um, you know, clean living, clean products, um, even breathing exercises for um, 10, day, 10 minutes a day for meditation to manifest your dreams and goals and, you know, purpose and um, set your intentions even. Um, so how has psychedelic how have psychedelic treatments and therapies benefited from this wellness trend that we see actually um, that's actually exploded? Um, it's become a big industry and it's um, affecting all industries uh, from beauty to food to fitness. So how is the psychedelics benefiting from the wellness trend right now? Um, Anne, did you want to start? Oh, Anne, you're on mute. <laughs> Sorry, my fingers slipped. Yep. Um, uh, I think that the wellness trend is an excellent opportunity for people to take control and responsibility for their, their health and well-being. 
So it's an opportunity um, to, again, address issues that you need to, um, be, to, to solve or to improve upon to basically have a better quality of life in your, in your person, right? So I think that the psychedelic side of it is a really awesome uh, benefit to that whole process because I think that you know we've looked at again just getting back to the the wellness being focused before on on how fit you looked how great your body was like it was all about the gyms and you know like your shakes and blah 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 like I've lived through it all like it was always a new trend at, at a new you know the new expo and and you know it became a lot of a commercialized market marketing you know without fact and I think that the psychedelics are very fact-based they're very science-based there's research behind it there's years and years and years of people's hard labor um, and passion behind this. And I think that, you know, we really have a great opportunity to say, hey, again, redefining what wellness is and expanding that to actually include uh, what we've just been talking about, which is really that, that connection and, and ascension of, of the human condition. And, you know, we're, we're literally seeing through this pandemic that whole outcome of the trauma and how many fractured fractured souls are out there. So, you know, this is really, I think, an incredible convergence of all of these, you know, all roads lead to Rome, like we're like right there. So, and I think psychedelics has been a, a huge uh, opening for for the, the discussion about about what wellness actually is. Oh, you're muted, Harvey. Oh, sorry. Oh, thanks, Shannon. I've done that too now. <laughs> um, thank you, Anne. That was wonderfully said. And uh, just wanted to continue um, to see if Sally May, you had anything you wanted to add to that as well. Um, yeah, definitely. So one of my clients recently so eloquently said that these aren't alternative trendy therapies or uh, lineages. These are actually the origin the origin healing modalities. So right now, you know, for me, um, yoga and the uh, how beautiful Shannon spoke about those parts of um, the the science of yoga. You know, whether it's the tapas and the yamas or the pran pranayama, those that lineage of like thousands of years, plus the lineage holders of plant medicines, again thousands of years through the indigenous. These are origin uh, therapies. And so suddenly, you know, sometimes in the West, it's like, oh, it's new. And it's like, no, we have to pay reverence to where they actually came from and remember. And then the meditation side of things, again, the Eastern uh, lineages. And if we want to really look at um, the spiritual part of things, there are many people that say that the Kundalini of our own planet shifted from uh, India, areas of Tibet, actually into Peru. So this shift between those two realms, right? It's not one or the other right now, both of them are parallel and we've missed that for a long time. Um, it was either one or the other, or like as Anne was saying, it was about looking good, but you know, the physical is not everything. It's the energetic body, like um, Shannon was mentioning. And we have to become, we have to understand that we are master creators and we are sovereign beings and we have been given massive amounts of technology in, in resonance with the earth to be able to shift anything that we want at any point. So if there's an illness through the clarity of the mind, cleaning up all the traumas and fears, we are able to shift our body. If there is something that we want to achieve, only if it's our soul mission, not just something out of attachment, but if we're aligned with our soul mission, then that will be created through, again, the power of our own essence and our own heart and our own mind. So right now, you know, fads are fads, but let's, let's get rooted into the ancient sciences and also what we're evolving into, which is making sure everything is clean. Now our systems are clean, just like the rivers, like our blood is clean, our, the earth of our system is clean, our air is clean, like Shannon was talking about the elements. And then from there, we'll be able to transmit that on our planet and hopefully you know, come into this shift that many of us are talking about and understanding that that's why we're here. That was beautifully said, Sally May. Thank you so much. Um, Shannon? Uh, thank you, Parveen. And I'll definitely, uh, I love that, Sally May, as well. I'll definitely echo that. And, and I think we, um, we definitely need to remember that 
that these uh, these tools have been around for thousands of years, and that's you know uh, something we need to give reverence to. So it's not something that you know is a new practice in the industry. Uh, it's definitely a way to with um, you know the popularity of biohacking and and uh, more people focusing on their health uh, these days it's definitely a way um, a popular tool so that that's a great thing but we do have to re give reverence and remember that these have been used by uh, you know on our earth on our planet for thousands of years um, you know even if you look at you know the, the different psychedelics and entheogens we go we can even go back to ancient Egypt you know where they use blue lotus um, so it's you know it's in the bible you know that's only 2000 years ago but um, you know they've been used used as long as existence has been in place, as long as plants have been growing on our planet, I'm sure there have been people that have been curious about them. So just, just remembering that and giving that reverence and respect to it as well is important. Thanks so much, Shannon, and a really important point as well to give that reverence um, and respect. Um, so just on the back of that, I wanted to actually ask, because we've talked a little bit about self-actualization amongst people and um, um, especially with the onset of the pandemic and, you know, men mental health being a um, hot topic I, and more of a concern for many people. Um, how can psychedelics work synergistically with other healing modalities? So how can it work um, together with other uh, um, treatments and modalities to benefit during this time and going forward? as we um, maybe head towards legalization in certain parts as well. Um, Anne, did you want to start? Sure. Um, again, I think it's, uh, I think it's, it's one tool in the toolbox, but I think it's a very, very important tool to have. Uh, and I also want to sort of point out to listeners as well and, and viewers, like in terms of like, the microdosing without the, you know, the, the, the more elaborate, not elaborate, but the actual larger quantities of a psychedelic that gets you onto what's, you know, referred to as a trip. Um, you know, I think that the, the microdosing is an excellent way to introduce a psychedelic. Um, and, and to, once you start microdosing, you'll actually get the balance and the connection and you'll actually start to get that, um, that little shift. And it's those little kind of shifts that I think are really important. Again, like bringing in the good food. And when you get nutrients into your body, you actually can tell the difference, like when you have actually brain fuel, you know, so I think it's, um, I think it's a, a great opportunity um, to look at different modalities of healing. But I think the important part is the conscious that you're, we are now as a society, we're, we're basically embracing the importance and the benefit of being conscious that there is trauma, one. Second, let's try to heal it, two. Three, how do we do that? And again, there's many different tools in the toolbox to do that, but I think the psychedelics is a really incredible, fast, efficient, safe way to get, you know, propelling us forward, kind of like get you unstuck. You're, un you're getting unstuck almost. Oh, thank you, Anne. And um, Shannon, was there anything else that you wanted to add to that as well? Uh, sure. And I'll, again, I'll echo what Anne said there. Um, but uh, I guess what I what I would want to um, emphasize in that is that, um, again, it's a tool in the toolbox. And all of these things work synergistically to get us to our goal, whatever our goal might be. Um, and if that goal is uh, spiritual evolution, evolution of our consciousness, um, then they work synergistically. So all of these things, nutrition, focusing on our, our mental health, um, looking on clearing out <laughs> or stilling the waters of the mind, um, you can say, uh, working on our energetic body, these all each tool in the toolbox works to go and build that same house. Um, so, you know, psychedelics might be the hammer, you know, yoga might be the wrench. <laughs> so it's just, it's just having all of these things that work synergistically to build that house that we're all looking to build. Um, and I think um, preparation 
for building this house is extremely important. So all of these tools do that. When we go through an initiation um, um, into different kriyas and to different practices in yoga, there's preparation. You know, there's a, a dieta that you, um, you know, there's a reason why there's a dieta for certain, for certain ceremonies. It's because we need to prepare for that. And there are different aspects to that. You know, what you put into your body, what you put into your mind, all, um, all contribute to what our house is going to look like in the end. <laughs> Thank you, Shannon. That was great. And uh, Sally May? Yes. Um, <clears throat> so it's an interesting time that we live in, you know, and I always have to go back to the um, guidance that I've received in ceremony. And I think all of us kind of go back to those bookends. And I always have to kind of refer back to one of my toughest ceremonies in Spain with um, one of the incredible padrinos from actually uh, padrino Alex Polari from the Santo Daime tradition, where, you know, for those eight, nine hours, I was completely in tears and in um, dismay at the potential reality of our, of our planet and what humanity is going to face in the next two, five, 10 years. And, um, you know, the science is showing that we are on a, a complete path of collapse and um, this is actually the sixth extinction. And we are, you know, David Suzuki says, we're in that car, we're heading towards the brick wall and no one's pulling the brake. So I think it's great that we kind of are narcissistic as a species and just focusing on ourselves, but there has to be a greater conversation, which I oftentimes don't hear happening um, in regards to what we're going to be facing in in the next while and and preparing for that and so in that ceremony ayahuasca and the guidance my higher self came through very strong and said in this lifetime survival is enlightenment and enlightenment is survival and so what does that really mean you know that means if we're not completely in full acceptance non-judgment complete presence we won't actually know and receive the guidance of how to stay here and, and live, live this new reality of new earth that, again, is also part of the prophecies. This isn't just us talking about it today. Again, these are ancient prophecies that have, whether it's the Hopi, whether it's the Egyptians, whether it's um, the, um, the um, Kogi of Colombia, you know, these are wisdom keepers that have, have warned us about this time. So, Okay, that's one side of it. And then there's the hope and joy and also what to what to instill within our body. So if I'm working with cannabis and for example, if there's a client that is not sleeping, is not eating, is dealing with an actual chronic illness, first thing first, you go to cannabis, right? Create the equilibrium. And then if there's issues with anxiety and depression, okay, you can start to bring the microdosing with, with mushrooms. If there is a massive fear factor, go into ketamine, allow them to receive that hug from the universe in the surrender. And then moving up to ayahuasca where she's gonna show us our, our basement. And then what happens, like if you see that there is a massive trauma and many of us are on the front lines are working with um, sexual trauma right now, Right, that like that is the clearing, the sexual energy that has been so uh, vilified and also um, tainted, and and it's the most powerful energy. That basement of ours has to be cleared. So when we come out, okay, back into hypnosis with someone that you that you uh, feel safe with, you go back into that basement, you take yourself out of those memories. This is all very shamanic work that we are all having access to. And so um, I know I'm speaking a little bit more about this, but this is, this is, the, this is what our kind of Anne was saying, our sovereignty, our self-responsibility. If we don't do it, we actually might not be able to make it. And uh, if that's not fire under our, you know, self-actualization um, fireplace, I don't know what is. And again, with all surrender that everything is perfect and we're perfect where we, where we are. Wow. Thank you, Sally May. That was um, wonderful, really informative and um, really interesting. Thank you. I think um, just taking a look at everything um, you've all talked about today in terms of looking at the mind, the body, the soul, and, um, you know, starting with the steps, 
just in the past 100 years, I think um, if we look at women's health particularly, um, there's been a change in the way we diagnose maybe uh, mental health or illnesses in women, uh, uh, specifically mental health previously was seen as a woman's kind of, you know, being emotional. And um, so how is, what are the strides that are being made in women's health with psychedelics? How are they positively impacting uh, women and um, how we take control of our own health um, today, tomorrow, and um, for future generations? Um, if, yep, thanks. Uh, go I'll ahead. take that one. <laughs> this, has been, I, this has driven me crazy. It, it drove me crazy when I, you know, started studying and learning about how women literally had been treated through the, the whole uh, psychiatric um, treatment, this, you know, deemed hysterical. Anxiety was a hormonal issue. It was really, it's really horrible the way we stigmatized um, mental health issues and they're not new. We're, what's new is that we actually are now acknowledging them and are, you know, talking about it openly. So as someone that's kind of been around a little bit longer than you ladies on the panel, um, you know, I, I've been very frustrated like with the, with the very limited amount of information that even in the health and wellness industry, um, you know, was provided. Like, you know, I'm sorry, but male, uh, you know, erectile dysfunction was a major, major issue. Dandruff was a major issue. Why? Because it was like guys cared about it. You know, like menopause, like seriously, I literally couldn't find a solution to my problem. Like the solution was in plants, but you know what I mean? Like we have to, we're, we're, I think as, as, as females, we're very connected to mother earth. I think we really actually are naturally um, more receptive to receiving that information. And that really is our gift as females. And I think that with, with the psychedelic movement, we, we now are able to say as, as women, we actually <laughs> need to be recognized and our health is important and our health is different than men's health. That's first and foremost. But in terms of mental perspective, um, I think that, you know, there's so many, there, it's allowed men and women, I think, to be as one rather than women's health over here and men's health over here. Mental health is not a male female issue. It's an issue. It's just an issue and trauma is trauma. So I think that, you know, as much as I can complain about how um, the medical profession like didn't focus on, on women's literal biology, um, at the same time, like from, a, psych from a, um, a psychological perspective, I think that the fact that we weren't identifying men as being anxious, we weren't identifying, like we weren't identifying their hormonal issues and they have them. Like we now know that, right? So we can now, I think, have an open, honest conversation about the differences that we have on a biological basis, yes, and that they need to be addressed and we need to be okay with that. You know, we're not all the same beings, um, but at the same time, from a mental health perspective, I think that it actually can create greater um, community and dialogue between everybody because it, it, it affects us all in the same way and psychedelics can help us all um, get through our own personal trauma. And by doing that, we actually connect with others and, and can hopefully take out some of those, um, those barriers for both men and women. Because a barrier for women is the same barrier for men. They're not seeing, they're not getting the benefit of the female knowledge or the, you know what I'm saying? So we, we, we both lose. So I'm really excited about psychedelics kind of um, bringing us all together from a mental health perspective, for, for sure. Yeah. But one so wonderful and, and it was really inspiring actually and exciting to think about um, the future going forward, um, you know, bridging that gap between the genders and um, treatment for everyone that's specific to your need. Um, so uh, was there anything that Shannon or Sally may you wanted to add to that before we go into the Q&A sec uh, section of the discussion? Sure, I can, I'll just say something really quickly, but um, I think psychedelics bring about that awareness and that, um, that we, it's time to balance the energies. <laughs> um, and when we look at, you know, male and female energies, we're not necessarily looking at man or, or woman, we're looking at balancing the energies in that. And um, I think with that awareness, it also brings about 
our connectedness as women, like Anne said, to the earth and to the planet. Um, and when we look at health, our health is dependent on the cycles of the planet somewhat. And to know that we're connected to those cycles, to know as women that we are supposed to cycle with the moon, um, you know, because of the pharmaceutical industry, um, if I'm allowed to say that, uh, as women, we forget that we're supposed, you know, that we're connected to the earth because these pharmaceuticals are inside of us changing the way our physiology works <laughs> um, to regulate our cycles. Uh, so it's, you know, it's that awareness that psychedelics brings that allows us to remember our connection um, and to know that when we um, are in our best whole health, that we are cycling with those cycles. Yeah, I'm so glad you mentioned the cyclical um, cyclical energies of our times and how, again, we are coming back into that uh, connection, Shannon. I think, you know, now me and my partner, you know, him being predominantly masculine, me being predominantly feminine, but with us also having that equal, we know that new moon, there's a ceremonial container around it the day before, new moons have become just as strong as the full moons and then the full moon same thing and that's also my time of um, moon time that's my own moon time and so in the past that was so vilified like oh just go over there and like oh she's on her she's on her period and like Anne was saying so many negative things around that and again I don't know if you guys know the book the red tent um, but also the indigenous you know ways of holding space for women during that time and so now actually another client was telling me that during her moon time she has three kids kids she goes downstairs to her sanctuary and her husband actually takes care of everything for those three days and she's downstairs drumming journaling just going into the garden and she has those three I get goosebumps she has those three days where that is her time of feeling the earth and transmuting the energies of the earth through her womb and it's really beautiful practices between the sacred masculine and sacred feminine that we can brought, bring more forward and um, I would also just I just want to say this piece too I forgot to mention it the synergy of the other plants and and I'm sure we know so much more about this area but right now the liver and the kidneys, the area of anger and the area of fear. So kidneys being fear, liver being anger. We are transmuting a lot of this energy on our planet and we need that support. So me and my partner are on a, are on a two week uh, cycle with the herbs of dandelion root, um, as well as cleavers. These are both tinctures ashwagandha to support the nervous system and just bring us into a calm, um, as well as nettle tea, also very supportive, and milk thistle. So I can't speak more highly about these plants that also support us during the times when we're going into ceremonies and um, helping our body because we're transmuting not only for ourselves, for the collective as well, especially women. I see Tracy's here. As well. Hi, Tracy. Um, <laughs> um, so we've actually got an audience question uh, from Natalia, and she's asked, uh, what is your opinion on the potential for healing properties of mixing plant medicines and psychedelics? So as an example, LSD with psilocybin. So does anyone want to take a take that question? Okay. Uh, and yeah, I, yeah, Celine, yes, great, go ahead. Yeah, I can start. So just to make sure I heard the question correctly, um, the combination of medicines, is that where the question is from? Yeah, the mixing of plant medicine with psychedelics for the potential of healing properties. I got it. I got it really good. So I, again, I think as sovereign beings, we have a choice, right, of what we're feeling called to. And it's really important that we we follow that intuition. For me, I mostly work with the organics. Um, but one of the most powerful ceremonies that I work with my clients on is actually psilocybin and ayahuasca together. And again, maybe in the lineage holders, the single sacrament is very important. But I, I received that guidance that these two... Um, 
um, the fungi and the vine right now work very well together because the ayahuasca is so deep in the gut and it will clean up so much of the internal state and the gut being a, a major place of our trauma um, and the, the, the clarity of the seeing of what, what our fears and beliefs are. Now the mushrooms are so beautiful because they actually help to rewire the brain and help us envision our future. And so the ceremonies end up being quite contained in that there's a, there's a like an elevation of mood and then ayahuasca comes in and then mushrooms bring the person out and they're able to actually um, verbalize what happened to them. And I also work with inner child work within the ceremony with them. So they're vocal and are able to communicate what has come up for them. And um, so I can't say too much about the other um, substances, but I have to say the combination in, in that um, piece is, has been quite profound and powerful for me and my clients. So yeah. I know as well that there's been some, there's research being done as well um, and, and great, um, uh, you know, effects uh, with people using um, cannabis and psilocybin in combination as well. So um, for similar reasons that the plants do different things um, and, and have different effects. So um, again, I think that it, it's, using the tools that you have. And I love what Salima said, that it's what, what is your calling? What are you comfortable with? What is, what's resonating with you? Because these are all personal journeys. So when, other, when somebody else's journey or somebody else's uh, routine or regimen doesn't necessarily mean that it's yours, but I think that, you know, looking and understanding that there's lots of tools in that toolbox and, and picking them up and what is it? Let's learn about it. Let's be open. Let's have that discussion. Like, that to me is super exciting. Oh, great. And uh, Shannon, did you want to add anything to that before? I think Tracy's going to come on in a few, in a minute. <laughs> uh, nothing additional other than just saying, you know, using your intuition to know, to see, see what works best for you. We all have different tools that work best for us. So it's just, you know, discerning which one, by seeing which one you're most drawn to.